and welcome to Caravan Escapades. Hope everybody's keeping safe and well. Um, hopefully you can hear me all right. It's not too windy for you. Uh, we're here at Dover. Um, and what I want to do is do you a little vlog on real experience with using Irish ferries. We've never used Irish ferries before. It's been our first time. Um, we've traditionally used P&O and from our vlog last year, uh, you can see what a nightmare that was been. Um, but our arrival at Dover hasn't been trouble free and I'll put a little bit of footage in there. It's literally taken us two and a half hours um, from arriving in Dover to getting to Portside. Um, it's not been that bad, but a little bit frustrating, that sort of stuff. Um, so yeah, so this vlog is really just about our trip uh, on Irish ferries and what we think. So we're literally just arriving at the check-in. Um, it seems most of the hold up was really just a French passport control. Um, it's understandable I guess but um, they're in no rush to get people, people through although they have put extra checkpoints on since we were here last time so what would you say was Claire two hours 20 minutes from arriving in Dover to getting to the Check. Irish Ferries Irish Ferries check-in So that's all was loaded on the ferry, um, you know, it's, it's very much of a muchness, it's not a particularly new ferry, um, signs of rust and wear and tear which you would probably get on most ferries anyway, um, so you know, in comparison to what we were on with P&O last year, very very much the same thing. So we're just having a wander around the boat, uh, this is the restaurant area here. Which again seems quite nice, quite clean, uh, not too bad at all. Um, and you know, based on what we were on with PO last year, again, here's one of the sort of main foray areas. But based on you know what we had on PO last year, it certainly seems just better kept, better looked after. Um, the boat's filling up now, again there's various different areas around the boat it just seems a bit of a cleaner and a nicer boat you've got your duty free here all that sort of stuff and all these different seating areas there's a go to like a veranda there at the front it is very much a smaller boat than the P&O boats we were on last year um, but I understand also that P&O have had some new boats so you know the situation could have changed there and now on to the area we'll come back to you in a bit there's not a chance you'll probably be able to hear me but there is um, you know some outside areas let me give you a quick look here One of the outside seating areas. There's probably others. There's Dover back there. You probably can't hear me anyway because of the wind. So there's a soft play area for the kids. Um, it's in here. There's various different activities. That sort of stuff. It's a reasonable size. They've got a decent kind of things going on few bits of them to do so yeah that doesn't seem too bad again it seems slightly better than what they had on piano last year sounds like i'm knocking piano does it no not me
En accord avec la politique de sécurité exploitée par la Ministry et la réglementation internationale pour la sauvegarde de la vie humaine en mer, l'équipage en service aujourd'hui. So we've just ordered some food, not particularly cheap. Um, I basically have the fish and chips. It doesn't look that appetizing, but we'll give it a go and it's 16.95. Bugger Walker's Chris two quid and a lolly two quid. I'll let you know I'll get on. So just finished the fish and chips. Didn't get a chance to show you the plate. Um, because it was whipped away so quickly once I finished. I mean, the staff are great at keeping the restaurant clean, they're going around, they're picking up after you, that sort of stuff. Uh, what did I think for the fish and chips? It was overpriced, overcooked, certainly not worth the money. Um, but you know what? I guess that's what you'd expect on the boat. I mean, I, I kind of only really tried the food just to see what it was like. Um, you know, I was just talking to Claire and she was saying, you know, compared to the sort of P&O boat, there just seems to be a little bit more about the tidiness and the appearance of the boat. Um, you know, I'm not saying that the decor's particularly modern, maybe a bit chintzy in places, that sort of thing, but very clean and tidy and certainly a lot of staff um, on the boat and looking after the boat and that sort of thing. Uh, value for money? Yeah, you know, <laughs> I, guess it, I guess it is value for money, um, you know, for the crossing. We got away on time, uh, we're in the middle of the English Channel and that sort of thing at the moment. So yeah, overall, not too bad. I mean, I'm not expecting, um, you know, cruise liner decor and cruise liner services, that sort of stuff. But you do pay a little bit of money, so you would expect at least something for that. Seating can be a little bit difficult to kind of get hold of, particularly in the uh, few seating areas around the ship. Um, half the problem is, is that people are basically laying out and sleeping on the seats, so they take up quite a bit of space, particularly if you've got two or three people. Uh, in fact, I think just in this area, there's about four people laying out fully along the seats. So they, although there looks like the spaces, there's not really if you kind of wanted to sit down as a family. So if you did want kind of some of these comfy seated areas, I'd get straight there as soon as you get on the boat. So a quick scan around the duty free shop. Very, very much the same as uh, any other on board duty free shop. A mix of kind of sweets, you know, your alcohol, um, your spirits, your beers, those sorts of things some toys and in fact we bought Darcy mate a bit of Lego um, and then you go on to your fragrances so you'll have to shave your perfumes that sort of thing and then makeup some more kind of souvenir gifts jewelry various bits of Irish related stuff and that sort of thing so pretty much the same as any old on board Duty free stop. See you in a bit. One thing about the boats and the crossings on the ferry, they're all the same whenever I've been on them. Um, it seems to be the air conditioning, they always seem to be quite warm and muggy and close. Um, there's no sort of real fresh air flowing through, or at least you know, air conditioned air, or it doesn't feel like it anyway. It always feels quite sort of hot and clammy. Um, but maybe that's just me. Comment <laughs> below what you think. There's probably absolutely no chance of you hearing me on here, but we come right up onto the top deck of the boat. There's France. You can see it over there. We're approaching Calais. Uh, there's even a helicopter landing deck on the ferry. Um, so here we are, there's the bridge up there. So you can get quite close to the bridge. But we're not too far out now. been very very slightly choppy but not terrible uh, yeah. I'll try and catch my breath so we've come down we've come in from outside and we've come to the upper veranda area so you can see it here which is not too bad um, there's more seating available here and it happens to be a little bit cooler so so we're just getting the disembarkation message and telling us to go to the uh, disembarkation points. You know, overall it's not been a bad crossing, a little bit choppy at times, um, boat wasn't too bad. Um, is there areas that could be improved? Yeah, but you know what? It's a means to an end. Uh, we want it to get us to France so we can start that journey south to the sun. 
So overall, yeah, we're reasonably happy. You can see the crowds now heading to those points. There's some of the Irish phase routes. You can see there. We're going to take the lift down because the lift is right opposite the car. So we're here on the ferry. We're literally just about to get off. Um, I'll include some footage, maybe time lapse it of us leaving. But that really was that was our um, trip on Irish ferries. I hope you found it useful. I've got a bit of information in there. Uh, there's a lot of me talking, letting you know what I think. But really, I hope you guys enjoyed it. So thank you very much for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Hit that notification button, and you'll get notified when we put out new content. So give us a thumbs up, give us a thumbs down. And we'll see you very, very soon. You take care.